Okay, so this is the shocking bit. This is a bit that shocked me. I'm very apprehensive. So that's why they printed all the bombings on the money. So it's all going to roll out, just like I told you it's going to roll out. Hoover Dam's going to get blown up, guaranteed. The uh, that, That'll kill the oh, water sorry. systems for California. They're going to bring the system down. The whole coronavirus thing, there's more. Um, you know, I could show you more coronavirus stuff about the general from, from uh, you know what? Let me see real quick. So I started scanning through my stuff. So on second thought, I'm not going to go into the whole coronavirus. You guys know they're rolling it out. I'll post some links, uh, like maybe in the next video or maybe on this video. Just just look in the description, and I'll put a letter from one of their generals in 2005. A friend of mine, Michael, sent it to me, uh, and the general just stating to their security council or whatever that in order for the Chinese people to survive, they have to branch out and take over other lands, and this would be best accomplished by infecting their own population with a virus that spreads to America, leaving the infrastructure intact so they could spread out and take over Australia, Canada, and the United States by leaving the buildings intact without nuking them and all this other stuff. So anyway, it's just more of the same. Anyway, I'll post a link, but... I don't want to go over it all. It's yeah, he's pretty casual about it. See, because that's not his call. But God called me as a watchman, prophet. I know now Ezekiel three, and I am accountable to share this message. So when the Lord took me up to the hut in eight June. I went, I had to go up the mountain. I ended up in a hut with no power. A lovely fire though. And I scribed the words of the Lord. He told me, he said, I had a break for it. it. took two weeks of repenting and soul searching. And I'd already done about four months worth before I left. And I broke through. And the Lord made it, I was without a doubt knew that I had broken through and now I was hearing and he said tomorrow we start writing he said he was going to give me a blueprint and at the, the blueprint I would basically have all the details that he was going to basically give me all the details and in hindsight when I look back he did so I was in that hut for two months and I basically got all the details. Nothing's changed. Um, he hasn't added to it and he hasn't taken away from it. And only now is he confirming it. He reminded me of the dream I had of my call to the Māori people. The Māori people in New Zealand. Now, for the last 25 years, I've always known that I've called, I'm have called i called to the Māori people and that I speak a prophetic word in Māori and I, it's followed by a miraculous sign. I'm not going to tell you the sign because I've already told you, but I'm not going to say it again. Just like I've just, I'm not even going to bother linking videos. If you want to seek out and do due diligence, you'll look through my videos. I never knew what the word was that I, that I gave to the Māori people because it was in their language and I don't, I don't speak it and they heard it and it sent a fire up the, north, the, up the South Island up the North Island because it was given to people with mana and influence. And because of the sign and wonder, it became something that turned the hearts of the people from their idols. We have an indigenous people here who worship idols just as us in our, well we do, with, in the western culture, we idol worship as well. We are all, none of us 
We've all fallen short, but this was specific to the Māori people. The Lord God was showing them, he was honouring them and giving them, a, they, were, they were fire starters. I was just doing what the Lord, it was all in his power. I had no, I had no choice, really. I just went along with the Holy Ghost. I walked, I didn't even walk, I floated up this church aisle and I called out, I karanged out a prophetic word and then I finished with a white, a song, which was a miraculous sign. The Māori people were leaving the church, they were indignant, they were offended. I had an impression I was calling them out, the Lord was calling them out on their idols, on their animism, which is ancestor worship. And polytheism, which is the worship of many gods. Those words the Lord has given me since. And he, when he gives, he gives me both those words and I had to look them up in a dictionary. So the point is, he reminded me of that dream when I was scribing up in the hut. And I had a sense of urgency that it was going to come to pass. It is now two years later. There must be even more urgency because now I'm finding out that the impression that the Lord has given me, and I don't like to guess because I don't know the exact words that the Māori are going to hear from God, but the impression is, and I'll, I can sum it up in one sentence, God is saying to them, and they have a terrible fear, because I know from my testimony, of communism. New Zealand was nearly taken over by a communist nation. And if it wasn't for the Yanks, we would be speaking another language. That was in the 50s, Pearl Harbor era. The impression I get is that the Lord is saying, and I have declared it before, That if you, if you do not lay down your idols, and this is for our nation here in New Zealand, that the communists will take your land. That's the Māori think 100% of the land is theirs. This is the more militant Māori, and they don't represent all Māori. But the Lord God is putting them in their place and saying that he will bring an army against them, a communist army, and they will lose their land if they do not repent of their idol worship and turn their hearts to the true God. So now Click has just said that that was the plan with the virus, and I'm confirming that that's the truth. I've actually said it already two weeks ago i have said it i'm not sure if it's on one of my uploads but my thought and i know that the holy ghost was leading me in this direction and i haven't read this letter from this governor my thought was that there must be an elite class in China, just like there is throughout the world who are puppeteers of this, and that they have a plan to find a paradise safe haven. And what made me feel this way was because I have had a dream where I saw and this may hope to God just be a warning dream because I think we're pretty much reliant on what the Māori people decide to do here in New Zealand whether we become communist. But in my dream, we were hiding out in the bush, native bush somewhere, a group of people, 
and then we just basically got herded up, rallied up by people in army uniform, which I believe it was it was a, a khaki colour with red in it, and I just I, I believe it was supposed to be a Chinese uniform, and a communist uniform, and we just got moved from one side of the hill to the opposite side of the hill, and I shared that word because. Then I saw some people marrying, putting on wedding gowns that were um, more like it's a good, it's a nice day for a white wedding type, red, not the bride of Christ, the Antichrist bride. So, then more recently, the word that I uploaded was when I was outside the bridegroom's house who was not my bridegroom I was like an estranged bride and the family within there wasn't my family either and I ended up in the bus up the back of the section and from there I viewed bombings bomber planes and bombs coming down and I viewed roadblocks and I viewed ships coming in on the harbour and I also saw army soldiers digging up bunkers which had been pre pre dug and throwing in really um bodies throwing dead bodies in into the into these holes and the thing is it was on the coast of New Zealand it was actually in Dunedin and I also felt that it was in Christchurch and the roadblocks were on the north facing exits which is in Christchurch the main highway going up towards um, Blenheim where the Cook Strait Ferry is and that is round about ring your way there's only one way in in a way or one way out and that's where roadblocks would be and in Dunedin there is um the Kilmog and that motorway is the only way in or out of Dunedin so that was where the roadblocks were and I wasn't sure that it was for New Zealand but I believe that the word of the Lord is that the Māori people must repent of their idol worship, lay down their gods, animism, and and polytheism, and turn to the Lord and acknowledge Him in all their ways. All the communists will take this land. On a on the flip side, on the good side, I've also had words where I've seen the Lord have victory in this country and we are a sheep nation and there is an immigration policy that the Lord God will have. So all you American rich philanthropists, well, from, from, from all over the world that have come and bought land here and and organize your bunkers and see this as some sort of safe haven paradise the lord god when he's when he is here when when this nation becomes a sheep nation and all eyes are turned toward him you will be leaving and everyone will be free to leave and you will leave willingly because there will be such a presence of God that you will not be able to stand because it is the fear of the Lord that what that what comes in the glory is the knowledge of God which includes the fear of God a holy fear which his sheep thrive in <laughs> but those who aren't his sheep run from so we have an immigration policy. We have plans for you to leave. And we also have an open policy, immigration policy, policy for those whom would like to live 
in a sheep nation so that you can come. Come freely. And we'll just see what happens. And that's basically what I've got from God for New Zealand. And I'm sharing it again with more confidence. Because I do believe whatever this link is that Click has is just another way in which the enemy is broadcasting his plans. But God is always giving us a heads up and he flips it. So it's flipped. People think this is a haven for scorpions. It ain't. It ain't going to be because the, the, the people of this land are not going to let down. They love they, they love New Zealand, but I think the Lord God knows that he's placed a heart in them for God. They've got this heart, and it's, it's something God sees that, that maybe no, no one else can see, and that's in the Māori people. So really, yeah, it's a rebuke, but it's actually a real honour what God's planning to do in, the, in this nation within the Indigenous people. And just to encourage you who live in other nations with indigenous cultures, uh, like the Indians or um, Aboriginals, I do feel that it's almost like New Zealand is like an exemplar. An exemplar, when I was a teacher, an exemplar is, is, is a, it's a, it's an example of excellence. It's, it's a model. It's something to model yourself off. And... What happens here is true for all indigenous peoples and nations. So he's flipping it. Now he has said that ethnic group will come against ethnic group. And we see that here. It's volatile here. It's volatile all over the world between black Africans. Oh, it goes on. And, and, and the injustices and, and everyone has a platform where they see themselves as right and justified in taking up arms and causing civil war and this is not what the Lord God calls us to. The Lord God is fighting this battle for us. It's in our hearts and it all means in the end just that first commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body and soul. And your neighbour is yourself. And that's going to be the answer. And we're actually going to see that. It's not all bad news. We're actually going to see that. And we're going to see his people rise up in power. And then we're all going to go home. But we're going to not leave without you. We need a harvest. The Lord Jesus Christ didn't come and live a horrible life as we've had to in this host body and die a horrible death as some of us may for nothing. The martyr's blood cries out. It cries out. The, saint, the blood of the saints cries out and there is a magnificent host cheering us on because we have the privilege of living in the end of days. This is a privilege. Okay, bless you.